Welcome to Hindsight. I'm Corey Carter. And I'm Ron Poole. And I'm- Let's get it started. On this podcast, we've hacked hundreds of entrepreneurs' hindsight to help you, the listener, with better foresight. Now, guys, if you want to know all about what we can do to help you focus on being you, head over to GetHHM.com. Keep pushing through those ups and downs that we all will have. We're still going to have amazing conversations with amazing people. Hindsight hacking boils down to amazing conversations with some amazing people. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hindsight Hacking. And today's special guest coming at you all the way from Ontario, Canada, the one, the only, Miss Candice Kirkbride. Now, Candice, she is the pod- the host of a Candid Moments podcast, and she's the author of the book. If you're watching the video, you can see right behind her, Changed by the Rain, and I can't wait to let her tell the story of this book to everyone listening or everyone watching. And uh, yeah, it's been been 20 years, right? If that's what, what I read correctly. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to tease it anymore, Candice. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you kind of take it away with any further of the introduction. And first of all, thank you so much for being here today. This is such a pleasure. Thank you, Corey. This is nice. I had you on my, sh- my show and now I'm on yours. Yep. It's perfect. Perfect. We love doing stuff like that. That way it's, it's, we get to know you better. And, and yeah. I know we've, we've had some really good conversations off air. So however, let's, let's uh, bring everyone up to speed. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about you and your background? Okay. Well, I'm just a small town girl trying to make a difference. I celebrate and I'm so grateful. Like, okay. Like I can't pull up my shirt here, but I have a grateful tattoo here. I love it. I like, I'm so blessed to still be alive. I'm 36 years old. I come from the Valley 20 years ago. I was struck by an impaired driver while walking home. And my boyfriend was holding my hand. He passed away that night. I sustained Uh, multiple injuries, skull fractures, a depressed skull, um, nerve damage to my optic nerves. I don't see from this one. So when I buy a box of six lenses or like a whole bunch, I only wear one at a time. So that's a deal. Um, My, okay, yeah, that's good. It's like, (laughs) if you don't think that's funny, I can't help you. That's Uh, funny. (laughs) Like I was going to say, out of you started, it was pretty harsh, but that was funny. Oh, good. I just have to like weave my little like sprinkle my can of spice on it. Love it. I thought my story was really good when I was healing from a brain injury. And it was really, guys, it was like the hardest thing I ever thought I would have to do in my life. I never thought I would have to do something like that. But when I was healing from it, I thought it was a good story. And I wanted to share this message with people. At first, it was impaired driving and being like, against impaired driving and making smart choices. And then I joined Toastmasters and I went along this leadership and communication journey that led me to writing my book and speaking on big stages and helping uh, touch, move and inspire people. And then I, so fast forward to 2019, I was hosting and producing a live speaking event here in Sudbury. It was the 13th one in the country called Mo Mondays. And it was so great. I was starting to build some momentum in the city by introducing all these speakers and having this monthly event. And then COVID shut me down after my my sixth event. So then I decided to go online and I've been, I launched my podcast this year on March 26th, which marked 20 years since I woke up from that coma and 20 years since I got to learn and grow and create this Candace, this new person. It um, There's a lot more details, but that's the goals notes version of it. Uh, it's, you know, so inspiring. And, and I, I, for, for someone that, you know, doesn't necessarily have the traumatic experience, doesn't have to retrain themselves to do things, um, but then they're still depressed or they're still upset with life and they're still hating everything. And, and it just, 
it blows my mind that we can't be grateful, that more of us aren't grateful of the little things. And, and so how do you, how do you handle people that are in that, that you're like, you don't even know my story and you're upset about your coffee being made wrong. Like, come on. Oh, you're right. You know, Corey, how I handle it. I always try to change the conversation. Like I like, and I put real effort into it. So when someone is bitching about how their day is and all these negative things, I say, tell me what you're grateful for today. So I just kind of want to switch the tune and they're like, well, not too much because I had such a bad day. Okay. But what went well in your day? You woke up this morning, right? Okay. Like you have a job, you like, do you drive? Oh, I had to go get an oil change or I ran out of gas. Or, oh my God, get over it. I don't drive. I take the bus and you know what? I can see the bus stop. So bonus. Um, I don't know. I just like, I don't, I don't always say that. I, I more so say it with like the people I know. But just try thinking about five things you're grateful for today. Just shift your mind. Because you know what? The universe is a mirror. And this isn't from all the books I've read. This is what I see and have experienced in my life. The positivity that you put out into the universe comes back to you in fold. And it's beautiful. But if, if you want to like choose to see the negative side of it the universe is a mirror and it will come back to you with some negativity just to kind of keep you in check ah so true i'm, I'm gonna steal ron's question or moment here for a second because <laughs> you, you just you reminded me of uh, not not necessarily reminded but you, you made me think of how we do need to be more grateful right like multiple times you've said that um and so i think we should go around the room here and name one thing that all three of us are grateful for. Oh, you're amazing. So, I love it for Corey, you. I literally, I'm writing down, like, like this is not fair. Because I was going to talk about, and Corey, you know I've been talking about gratefulness. Like, like that's been, it's funny because that's been my word. There's two words I'm living by right now. Grateful, well, three. Grateful, thankful, and intentional. Nice. Oh, right? that's powerful. And, and and I will tell you, it's it's life-changing. life changing. So Corey, I love it. I love it. You can go first. Okay. I'll go first. All right. I am, I am grateful. Um, I got to wake up, uh, my daughter this morning before she went to school, she's seven second grader. And, uh, a lot of times my wife wakes her up, but you know, some days I wake her up and, uh, today I got to wake her up with, and part of that process was like snuggling with her for a few minutes as she slowly woke up. And so that is, uh, something that helped jumpstart my day. Uh, in a positive way today. Yes. Yes. All right. Candace, would you like to go or I can go? You can go. All right. So I am grateful and, and this is going to come to no surprise to Corey, I'm sure. Um, but I am so grateful for my family and my wife and just how blessed I am to be married to her. And just, I'm, I'm very grateful that she's in my life. That's beautiful. Um, I have a bestie. She is my my soul sister, my my best friend, my reason for being. I spoke with my mom on the phone this morning about Thanksgiving, which is next weekend for us Canadians. That woman, we're going to get a matching tattoo. That's what we're planning. And it's going to say soul sisters on it. I love that woman. I like my God, I'm so grateful for her. Like, it just chokes me up to think that, like, one day we have an expiry date. But I'm grateful for just having her as my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so good. All right. Thank you, Kim. Coming to the show. I think yeah. we're done. That was yeah, pretty powerful. Well, that's, that's a wrap. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, Before I start crying. Yeah. Right. No, no. I mean, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it is now my turn, Corey. I believe it is. My it turn. is. It is. <laughs> so, and, and don't make Candace so, cry, Ron. Don't make her cry. No, no, like, she's crying. We're gonna cry. Like so no, you it's, it's, it, Ron. it's <laughs> unbelievable. Like, like you came out with grateful um, to even start the show. Like that. That was not planted. That was not something. And like I got choked up just hearing that word. Like that word means so much to me right now. And and it's uh, it's. 
it's very interesting how often you start to hear or see or recognize that word. So it goes back to that the universe will conspire things to, to whatever it is that you're putting out there. And I'm putting out gratefulness like so much. And, and it was funny that you brought that up. Uh, we had a church event last night. That was the first word they started the message on. And I'm like, gosh, like it's everywhere, you know? And, and I think once you start feeling that it, it you attract it. Yes. Oh my gosh. I so believe that. And I think another form, you know what gratitude means? Gratitude can only come from love, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like if anybody, like whoever's listening to this, I'm sure they can relate. Gratitude comes from here. And whenever people tell me a touching story and I, I go like this, I'm touching myself, like my heart, because I'm feeling and I'm gra- I'm grateful that they're sharing their story and connecting with me. All right. <clears throat> okay, we can we can move forward here. I, I promise. All right. Uh, let's let, let, tell us your story of going through Toastmasters and and getting on that first stage. I'd love to kind of hear, uh, you know, obviously you knew that you wanted to, to inspire, you knew that you wanted to, at least with the, you know, impaired drivers aspect. Um, but, but yeah, tell us about that, that process to get on that first stage. Oh, wow. I, um, that was before, it wasn't like a, a stage. I had spoken, you have to read the book. It's all in the book, but, um, one of my my big, like my first big speaking events was at uh, Cecil Facer. So that's a, like a maximum security, like a detention center for youth. And somebody had hired me. I think it was the social worker who was working there. She hired me to go speak to these students. And oh my gosh, you could hear a pin drop in that auditorium. And it was all about drinking and driving and what this man had done to my friend and me in my life. And like, there were like really young students, like right in the front row. And that was before I joined Toastmasters. I had done a few speaking engagements, but then when I joined Toastmasters, it, I was starting to craft something and it was starting to evolve. Instead of saying, um, preaching to people, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Like, I was very young, like I was 20 years old. Um, I I worked on my presentation skills that brought me to give a workshop uh, and it had to do about with gratitude uh, at a Toastmaster conference. I got a Members Making a Difference Award for all the speeches I've done all over my community. I have a speaking journal. Where is it? It's full. It's like, it's over 200. Oh, it's right here. It's huge it's um like this thing is full and and uh, there's another one somewhere but anyway I go off on tangent a lot but I've also learned how to kind of bring it back <laughs> <laughs> perfect <laughs> I, I don't work with somebody that does that at all not at all I don't see <laughs> all whatsoever I'm always focused very straightforward Did very you much training yesterday what's that Nothing. I was just scrolling. Uh, funny. <laughs> no one laughed. It hurts my feelings. That's I missed it. it. <laughs> that is okay. I didn't understand it, but it was still funny. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. That's that's called a courtesy laugh for anybody that's listening. Yes, that. absolutely. If you have not courtesy laughed while you're listening, shame on you. All right. So one, like I, I'm still like stuck on this whole gratefulness thing. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to move forward on that. Okay. And, I, and so for, for how you're impacting people and, and you getting out there and connecting, I would love to hear, so, you know, I, I'm sure there's people that come up to you or that are like, this has changed my life. This is what, you know, you've helped me. I would love to hear one of those stories just because it's a good time for it. Oh, Ron, that is such a great, powerful question. Oh, I could tell you so much. I have goosebumps right now because I have been blessed to be able to share. Like I have learned how to communicate properly and that has helped me to connect with people. So I'm this 
I'm this little girl from the Valley who's trying to make a difference. I've been on big stages with like, oh my gosh, close to a thousand people in the audience and people have come up to me or maybe it was just 15 people at the hospital with the party program and people come up to me like at a book signing too, but like, let's say at the hospital where people have come up to me and said, you know what? A family member of mine is going through something very similar. Okay. So this was last fall. Um, I forget her name. It doesn't matter, but there was a lady in town whose little boy, he was 14 years old. He was riding his bicycle, got hit by a car, sustained a brain injury, went back to school on November 30th. I know because I interviewed the principal that day. He's a good friend of mine. And he said that he had lent her my book and she emailed me and said there were so many parallels with my story and her son's story. And she said, like, you have given my family so much hope. Like, there's no way I can thank you, but you have given my family so much hope. And I hope that because like her son is younger than I was when I was injured, the brain is so resilient. You know, she has so much hope for this little boy. And like stories like that just touch my heart. Oh my gosh. And that, you know, if um, I don't want to give away the um, like the highlight of my book, it okay. So sneak peek, it has to do with forgiveness. So Ron, my oh. gratitude, my oh. gratitude comes from the pinnacle of the story, which is the moment I forgave. When I forgave, I became lighter and free, and I was like, "Happy Wednesday, Happy Tuesday, I love you, I love you, have a great day," and. Why do you think I have grateful on like tattooed on my life? Like I, I'm, I became happy instead of that. Like, oh, we're not going to go like, we're not, we don't live there anymore. We live here and I'm not going to dwell on those angry, resentful, yucky feelings because that's not what my life looks like. It's sunshine and rainbows in here guys. So you know what? I'm happy now. No. And I did go off tangent and I apologize. No, not at all. Like, because you said the other word, which is forgiveness. So, so yeah. no, Corey, I'm stealing your, your spot. So I'm just letting you know I'm stealing your spot. Um, no. So you stole mine earlier. So I get to steal yours. No, yeah. I mean, so forgiveness. I, I think that is so powerful because I am a recovering grudge holder and I hold grudges, period, end of story, period. Like I do. No, I rephrase that. I did. And Good. I, I had to forgive some things that were powerful for me to actually be able to do that <laughs> with God's help. I, I did. And it's unbelievable. The freedom that comes with that, because at the end, at the end of the day, this is something that I read that kind of opened my eyes. If you're holding your grudge, the only one that you're hurting is yourself because the person you're holding a grudge against doesn't care. Doesn't care. Doesn't right. know. Could, could could probably care less anything about you. So why bother holding a grudge? You're just hurting yourself and you're living in that moment. Right. And that energy that you're using to hold that grudge is being used in a negative way. You have so much great, powerful, glowing energy that you could be focusing on your list of goals or making a difference in your community or helping someone when you're just being angry with a situation or a person. Oh. Mm. Right? Mm. Yeah. I feel mm. you. Yes. <laughs> so I love this interview. This is great. Yeah, I love this interview fun. too. Thank you. It's like self self help for uh, for everyone right now. Uh, right. Self care. All right. So, thinking about you know the entrepreneurs that listen to the show and the the troubles and trials that they go through to to get on a stage and the the work that goes into it and then uh, and and then the you know hopefully walk away feeling like they've had success on that stage and and so I, I want to ask you just all the stages that you've talked on, all the, the places that you've been, 
um, obviously you started with touch, move and inspire people as, as a goal. Right. And so um, can you like walk us through one of those moments of being on a stage where you felt like this was the absolute epitome of success. I have inspired and touched so many people and I've, you know, these 20 people came to me and they were just like over the moon or whatever it might, might've been. Uh, I'd love to hear like, what was your, how did you know when you left that stage that that was, that was like the, your, one of your favorites and it was so successful because of whatever. That's a hard one. Okay. Um, June 1st, 2019, I went to go speak up North in Timmins. Yes. Even more North than me, like four hours North from here had a brain injury um, 25th anniversary for the brain injury and stroke clinic. Uh, I spoke for this group and lots of, uh, so the people in the back were like caseworkers who work with, with their clients. And then everybody else was, um, support givers or, and brain injury survivors. And I gave this one hour presentation that my coach, Roger, helped me craft. We turned a keynote into a workshop and it was brilliant. And it turned out even better than I imagined because then I opened up the floor. I opened up the the questions to the floor and I started to ask them, how did you go through all these? What were your techniques? And then we started sharing stories. And at the end of it, everybody in that room came up to me the brain injury survivors they said I my name is so and so this is my injury this is what happened and I loved that you shared your story thank you and then all the co-worker like the workers that did not like have an acquired brain injury they thanked me for like what was it? it was like for them to switch their perspective from being the caseworker to having more empathy for these people and walking in their shoes. I was like, you know what? You need to read my book, man, because this is like, oh, yeah, I hope this this moves you. And I'm so blessed that I'm able to do that. Okay, so that was one of them. And then another one was at one of the college, it was a private college in town it was more than a decade ago I think I was talking somebody asked me I was dating somebody at the school and one of the teachers asked me to come and speak to their uh, I forget what it was like just brand new students it was like a learning strategies class or something and I gave this speech about and it had three points and it was a Toastmaster speech it had a beginning and it flowed nice and there was a, like a good ending and it was so powerful. And it was about believing in yourself, like going to college and chasing your dreams. And I kind of used my story and like, my ex- hey, I'm still learning, but like my experience in business and how I've had to like shift my life. It was just, oh my God, that day I went out of there and I was like, bam. Like I, I only wrote down three points and typically I'm one of those, like, I can't read a speech because like, I don't see too well. So you're going to see me look at the page, but like I wrote three points and I was like, I have Toastmasters experience. I'm going to rock this. I got out of there and I was like, oh my God. Cause these students were like, wow, you really like, you touched me. I like, I'm going to look at things differently now and I'm going to have a great education. And I was like, yes. Oh, I love it. I was just, I don't know. I can't hide my passion. It's just, it comes out of me and I just allow it to flow. <laughs> love it. It is your turn, Ron. Oh my gosh. I'm so confused. Just in case. Oh, we, we've we've gone back and forth the wrong way this time. So. <laughs> I know. I totally thought it was your turn. Oh my goodness. I saw you oh looking my. at it. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> no, no. I was I was writing stuff and I was like, ah. Because we take notes and then we share some takeaways and I've got it. Right. Um, all right. So I, I love that you've taken something that was, could have like st- made you stumble and made this like your superpower, which is amazing. Right. Okay. And, and, and I would love to actually hear kind of how you've, 
how you make it. Cause it's a choice. I'm sure like, here's, here's my superpower and I'm going to go like, how did that come about? Oh my God, Ron, I have two superpowers. I know it's my communication skills to connecting with people and I'm a weather vane. Okay. So do you want to get deep? We're going to get yeah. deep right now. Let's go so, deep. Okay. Let's get deep. I love this. I wish I was recording for my show, but this is great. Um, <laughs> we'll give it to you and you can put it on your show. It'll yeah. Be you can do a recast. Yeah, but, a recast. Well, <laughs> we'll see. The next one will be about you guys. There you so go. this la- couple nights ago, I would actually no, last night too. Okay. So I have, more hardware in my face than many of the humans I know. Um, oh, animals too, I guess, but whatever. Um, so my bones fused back together with titanium screws, uh, 22 titanium plates, more than 80 screws and a whole bunch of sutured wire. And w- I remember back in the day, what one of the surgeons had said something like, you're going to want to wear a hat during the winter. Okay, if this, I would go back to him and say, you know what, you weren't kidding, but you you didn't neglect to tell me that I was going to suffer with chronic pain. So last night I was in so much pain. Like the pain was like, like I feel it like four days before it's gonna rain or snow. And I live in Sudbury, Ontario. So like, it's gonna be a cold winter. But you know what this pain is all about guys? I was given this pain to teach me something. I'm still working on the lesson there. When I get it, I'm I'm sure it will flow. (laughs) But um, I was in a lot of pain last night and it was before a dance class. And I was like, oh my God. Okay, you know what? I still had my dance shoes with me and I went to dance class and I rocked it. Was I in pain the whole time? Yes, I was. Did it stop me? Heck no because I don't want that to stop me. It's supposed to teach me and other people that you can push through pain. It's going to like, you're going to ache. You may suffer, but you know what? It will be worth it. Oh, so good. <laughs> and this, again, I'm, I'm usually a pretty positive person. Uh, and I, I try to don't, I don't stress about things until I need to stress about them. And I try not to, you know, sweat the small stuff, that kind of mentality. And, um, but you've, you've really shown that it can be a different level. Like, uh, you know, so, so many things can happen to us or for us and it's up to us to choose which one. And you just got me thinking about all this stuff right now. And and it's so good, but uh, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to shift gears a little bit on, you know, again, the moral point of the show is we want to get your hindsight to help our listeners foresight. And, and so with that, uh, you know, when did you, you know, in hindsight, like when did you truly decide that this was the path that this, that you're going to go and touch and inspire people? Like when was that moment and, and could it have been sooner? Do you wish it was sooner? No, it happened exactly the way it was supposed to be. If I were to redo my life, I would, I, it would, it would be the same. I'm so grateful for when I had those, those, those really big pivotal moments. One of them was when I spoke at the school when I was still a student. And one was when I was going through recovery and I was in the hospital and I was, I had a seatbelt on in the wheelchair and I was like, okay, like, can you undo the seatbelt? Because like, I need to get up and I walk, but I had a stroke that suffered, like it affected the side. So I couldn't lift my left arm to get out of the wheelchair. But I was like, no, listen, I'm going back to school and I'm going to live a happy, successful life. That was like, that was the moment. And I was like, okay, so I'm a, I graduated from college, you know, I, I'm, I'm successful in my own right. I'm not a millionaire, but like, I'm just doing things my way and I like it. Thank you, Frank Sinatra. That's a great tune. Uh, <laughs> um, see, sometimes that happens where there's like a, oh, and it was good too. See, I lose my train of thought sometimes. It's okay. It's all good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. 
Ron, at the, who had a question? Was it Ron? Well, let's, go ahead. I was just going to say, so you were, you're talking about in school, you made the choice that you're going to live your life. Um, and I, so I was in the Moscow. hospital. Okay. So, oh, so after surviving a stroke, I am a Latin and ballroom dancer now. So that can teach anybody that they can do anything. I'm telling you, like, like I don't see you if you're walking on this side of me unless you're holding my hand and I can feel you there. But I can still see you, but just not, there's no peripheral. But you better walk on this side because, like, the peripheral's not there, but, like, I see from this side. You know what? It's all good. We go through our struggles. We can't compare them. But we have been given struggles to teach us. So what is your lesson? What are you meant to teach, learn from this? Oh, oh my gosh, this is this is crazy. So <laughs> it, it, it's funny because, you know, you talk about trials and all of those things in your life and, and you're taught or the Bible teaches you to be grateful for trials. And, and I, I don't like feedback. You can ask Corey. I, I don't like feedback. Every boss I've ever had <laughs> uh, tells me I should work on feedback. My wife's like, you should probably just take the feedback. And I'm like, I hate feedback. Like, I don't like anything negative, like coming at me at all. And, and what I've learned is you have to be grateful that you've been able to be shown something that you can then turn it around to fix whatever it is and be able to help somebody else that's possibly going through the same thing. Oh, constructive feedback. Preach into the choir, Ron. You should join Toastmasters. You'll learn how to accept constructive uh, feedback. <laughs> I, I think I'm doing okay right now. Oh, you are. You're doing <laughs> great. I'm just I think I got enough right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Candace, my, my last question for you today. And uh, first of all, thank you for, for hanging out with us, uh, giving us some moments, uh, making Ron cry. And it's always fun to do that. It's so, always fun. Um, but, but what's, you know, there's so many less, the, what is the lesson, right? Like that's kind of the last thing you just said. But um, if you were talking to somebody and you saw them in the dumps and you, or you saw that they were going through something major, like you had to, or somewhere in between, if, if, if they were just like, what's the one thing I can do to make my life better? What's that, what's that little bit of advice you can. How can you give back? How can you relate? How can you help other people? You're going through something really hard right now. And guess what? It's not going to be your last time going through something hard, but think of something where you can give back. There's people whose stories, like you can help so many people through your story. Yeah. Yeah. We're all going through something like we experience life differently, but we all bleed red. Yeah. And this too shall pass. That's it. Mic drop. <laughs> that is that is crazy. No, and and there's there. This is this has got to be one of my favorite favorite shows. So, oh, uh, Ron, I thank not you. Listen to this show. Like, what is your problem? Like, if you haven't watched it live and you want to see someone cry like Corey, like go watch it live. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're just people connecting with each other, right? No, it's, it's it again. I don't believe in coincidences. Corey knows my story about no. coincidences. I feel everything happens for a reason, and I think it, it's so. Let's tell the story. You were supposed to be on what was it last week, and we had some technical difficulties. However, during that week and today, so much more has changed around the gratefulness and the forgiveness piece that was different than last week that it needed to be this week. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't in the, the right frame of mind last week to tell the story. Maybe. And maybe. Ron might've not have been in the right frame of mind to hear it. So I, it's like exactly, exactly. So, so right. that's, 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 that's the difference right there. So super grateful that you came on the show today. Yeah, super grateful. Thank so you. I, I, I know that people are like, Holy smokes. I need to get involved with this with Candace, how do they find you? Where do they connect? How do they get involved in you? Oh, okay. Um, 
candidmoments.ca is my podcast. Um, my and the email, website. And the website, can, candidmoments.com or .ca. No, .ca because yeah. it's yeah. Canadian. Um, I'm on Facebook, Candace, Kirk, uh, Candace Christine Kirkbride and my podcast page, candidmoments.ca and my email, candidcandisk at gmail.com. If you want to be highlighted on my show and have a fun conversation with me, then hit me up. Awesome. Candace, thank you so much. Ron, I think it's your turn to go in, on Candid Moments and uh, no have another conversation yeah. with uh, Candace there. It, it would be crazy. It'd be crazy. So, That's a good it'd be a cry fest. So let's do yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, Candace. We'll talk to you soon. Thank yeah. you. Happy Friday, guys. Bye. Do you know that Hindsight Hacking Media Agency, we do all things podcasts from launch. If you're already doing 10,000 downloads in a week, we handle everything. All you have to do, record it and forget it. Guys, if you're launching a podcast, get with these guys. I could not honestly hit the charts without them. I'm not getting paid for this, but working with both of you, the professionalism and the system that you guys had to launch the podcast, you guys killed it. We want to help the impactors create an impact by just letting you be you and not worry about all this other crazy stuff. Connect with us. All the links will be in the show notes. See you next time. Go create an impact.